What's up everybody, this is Investing Sensei here to bring you episode 95 of the portfolio update. So hopefully you guys are doing awesome. I definitely am. I'm gonna talk to you guys about what I did this past week, what I bought, what dividends came in, and how our projected uh, dividend payout is uh, doing right now, right? So uh, we continue to dollar cast average into the portfolio every single week. We add $100 and uh, we see these projections continue to go upward. So uh, it's definitely exciting seeing how much uh, we grow these, right? So uh, this was actually from last week, but uh, while we're here, actually, I'm going to go ahead and copy this just so that when we do kick off these scripts, we can see the difference and see how much we uh, increase this. So right now, the goal is to try to get this to $2,800 uh, annualized uh, projected dividends. Uh, if you guys did miss the last upload, remember that our quarterly dividends, we continue to see this grow and grow. Uh, we ended up calculating all the dividends for the month of July. So you'll see that that was 2021 Q3. Uh, we made a total of 198.62 if you guys did miss that episode uh, or i guess upload be sure to go and uh, watch that video uh, drop your guesses on how much you think we'll be making for the month of august and then we're going to come back in september and see who was the closest uh, it'll be definitely exciting to see how much we made for the month of august because remember we did reorganize our portfolio we sold out of at&t and a couple other companies uh, but uh, overall long term these dividends should continue to move upwards and upwards. Uh, but I will be talking to you guys uh, about five tips that I am doing uh, in preparing for a market crash. Nobody knows what a market crash, or I guess when a market crash will happen, right? So I'm gonna share five tips with you guys and uh, hopefully you guys can learn something and uh, I'm gonna show you guys what I am doing. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm actually gonna show you guys what the portfolio is at right now. So you'll see that the portfolio is uh, trading at $186,370.68. This is actually, I believe, a new record high uh, on our portfolio. So if we look at the value over time, uh, you'll see the long-term trend is going upwards, right? So we continue to average in every single time. You'll see this big dip right here. This was actually last year with the market crash, but we took great opportunity, bought so many great companies at a discount, and uh, it has paid us off very well, which is actually something that leads to another question that have I have been asked, right? So my portfolio is at $186,000, and uh, a lot of people ask like, hey, you're getting paid so little for this Size of, size of account right so i'm gonna show you guys in a little bit on my holdings and i'll show you guys why that is uh, but if we look at the one quarter you'll see that the trend is going upwards right uh, if we look at the one month we are kind of like uh, dipping going up down a little bit uh, and uh, i believe this is actually the all-time high yeah so 186 three uh 186 thousand uh, and uh, we're going to continue to move upwards. The goal is to hopefully see if we can get this to $200,000 by the end of the year. Uh, I think we will, but you know, long term, remember that our goal is to see this quarterly dividends increase because we don't really care what the value of the portfolio is as long as we can continue to grow our projected income right here. So if we look at these projections, our monthly, I really want to get this to 250. So every you know month we get $250 in passive income remember guys passive income is the best income you could actually have you don't have to do absolutely nothing like currently right now the portfolio is making us 31 cents every single hour that goes by right uh, it's definitely way better than active income active income is your nine to five job where if you have to go to work if you don't go to work uh, you're not going to get paid passive income you could do whatever you want you could go to sleep you're going to get paid because it's passive income but uh, anyways, let me show you guys that um, the, that one question that I do get asked a lot, right? So my portfolio is at 186,000, right? And they're like, hey, you are only making uh, $225 on average per month for $186,000. Your dividend yield is super low, right? Well, if we look at uh, the holdings, right? So I am going to continue to average in into the portfolio and that's what I've been doing every single week. Uh, so look how much we are up in gains, right? So that is $74,000 uh, in just unre unrealized gains, right? So if we look at like Apple, well, I guess if I filter it out by gains, right? So Nvidia, we are up $20,000. Uh, we invested about $4,000 we really had six thousand dollars and this was actually worth like thirty two thousand or thirty four thousand i don't remember the exact value but we were up massively with nvidia skywork solutions you'll see that we invested three thousand five hundred dollars it's worth nine thousand dollars now microsoft we invested ten thousand 
almost 11,000. It's worth 22,000. So you can see all these gains, right? Uh, so all these gains is what brings my portfolio up and it makes it so high and like $186,000. But really what I have only have invested currently, if I show you guys money invested here, uh, you'll see that if I scroll down here, uh, you'll see that all I have invested is a total of $94,681.84. That's all I have invested from my own personal money. Everything else has been capital appreciation that I have received that I've actually taken and the other stuff is unrealized gains as well as dividends that have been reinvested into the portfolio. So this is such an awesome thing and that is why my dividend yield is so low. So that there's actually one thing. The second thing is that I'm invested in companies that have a really low dividend yield, right? So we have Microsoft, we have Apple, we have uh, Visa. Where are you Visa? Somewhere over here. Uh, well, I would have to uh, sort by alphabetical order, but we have Visa. All of these companies that have a double digit Kager, really low payout ratio that uh, 10 plus years from now, they will be massive dividend yielding companies. Uh, Costco is another one. So these all, all these companies are paying me really low right now, but I don't need the money right now. Uh, 10 years from now, that is when the when I will be uh, rewarded for myself. And uh, you know, I have about 20 year time horizon before I even need to touch this money. I really think I probably 30 years, but I'm not sure, you know, uh, we'll see what happens with that one. But the, the goal for me is I'm not short term. There, there might be a different situation for you guys if you wanna retire a lot sooner, or also depending on your age, uh, you definitely might need a higher dividend yielding company. But again, mine are usually in the one to 2% dividend yielding companies. But uh, you know, I'm invested in it for the long term because of the double digit Kager that they do have. Um, so yeah, that is one of the questions here. And actually, if I show you guys track your dividends, this is a website that you can Im import your portfolio. It'll tell you your yield on costs. You'll see that my dividend yield for this portfolio is a, like 1.46% dividend yield. And then the yield on cost, this is my actual value on how much money I have invested. It's about 2.42%. And then the annualized income is about $2,707. So it's a little uh, off from my projection from uh, if we look at the dashboard here. So I have realized that track your dividends sometimes uh, doesn't calculate everything correctly. I've found some issues there uh, and I haven't looked into why I'm off by $3, but as you'll see, it's probably not updated as well. And so, yeah, that is one of the good questions that you guys have asked me about. I, I definitely understand where you guys are coming from on why you, you know, obviously want $186,000 portfolio, I would expect it to pay more, but you know, a lot of it is unrealized gains. And I also have a lot of companies that have uh, low dividend yields right now, but have a really high well, I guess double digit cakers. Uh, so yeah, uh, so now let me show you guys the activities, right? So the activities is what I did this past week. So that was August 2nd, 2021. And so remember what's so awesome about this. And let's see, I'm not sure why this is not getting filtered out. Oh, and that's because I put the wrong year. Okay. so. You'll see that on August 2nd, we got a dividend from JP Morgan of $114.54. Uh, this was actually supposed to show up in July, but since they paid out in, uh, I believe, weekend, so it doesn't show up till the following day. Uh, and then we did get a dividend from Verizon, so that was starting off August very strong with a $26.39. And then uh, we got charged the last payment from M1 Borrows. Remember that I did borrow money with M1 to buy JP Morgan when it was trading like at $120 a share. I believe like JP Morgan's doing like 150 now. And so that was a pretty good trade that we did there. Uh, but on August 3rd, I went ahead and reinvested those dividends. So I went ahead and reinvest them. So I bought back my, uh, well, I guess I did a drip. $26.39 went into Verizon and then the $114.54 went into JP Morgan. And so that was our drip there for that. And uh, I ended up depositing $12.71. This was to pay off the M1 borrow and we are completely debt free guys, which I will show you guys in a little bit for uh, the M1 borrow.
Uh, so if we look here, you'll see that we deposited our $100 to continue the dollar cost average into the portfolio. And uh, we ended up reinvesting it right away. So we did three buys. And uh, remember that every time a dividend company pays me out, I am going to contribute $20 towards it. So I ended up buying $20 of Verizon and then $20 of JP Morgan. And then the rest, I went ahead and bought Lockheed Martin because Lockheed Martin has been a great deal for me right now. And we bought 0.16 shares of Lockheed Martin. So that is really awesome and exciting. So let's actually look at this green button that I do have a tutorial if you guys are new to the channel. And as well, if you guys are new to the channel, aren't enjoying the content, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification so that you're notified when I upload new videos. Uh, I typically upload a video every single Sunday, so you should expect one there on the M1 account. So let's go ahead and click this green button. What this does, it'll calculate, well, I guess it adds up all our dividends for uh, what's showing up in the Google Sheets. Not the Google Sheets, but the M1 activity. So let's go ahead and click calculate. And uh, we made a total of $140.93 which is pretty awesome guys. We did nothing, absolutely nothing for this money. And uh, that is passive income. Imagine what you could do with $140. Uh, you know what we did? We went ahead and reinvested it so that next time, well, I guess next quarter, we get more dividends from this. So that is pretty awesome. And we're gonna generate that snowball effect. Uh, the other thing here is you'll see that this one shows $140.93. So you could also see that our calculation was correct. But uh, let me show you guys the M1 borrow here. So you'll see that finally we are at zero dollars. We don't owe anything to M1. Uh, so we are debt free, guys. This is so awesome. And uh, we are completely done with this. Uh, reason why I wanted to do this is actually uh, which leads to our first point and uh, how to prepare for a market crash, right? So first point that I want to make is that you should definitely try to pay off debt and uh you know that is what i'm doing and that is what i did so i have zero dollars in debt uh if you guys don't have m1 borrow uh, one of the things that i do recommend is to try to pay off your credit card debt if you do have any uh you should typically not have any credit card debt because credit card debt is pretty bad it's got like one of the worst uh interest rates uh, and so definitely pay that off uh, you could also you know you could probably be like well i have a mortgage right a mortgage is a good debt right because you are borrowing money to buy an asset that is appreciating in value over time and remember that inflation is two percent so if you had a hundred dollars in the bank today uh, by the next year those you'll still have one hundred dollars right but you can only buy uh, about 98%, well, I guess $98 worth of buying power. It's still the $100, but uh, inflation in causes that value of money to go down. So uh, what, what this does is that you have your asset of your, com of your house, right? Uh, you're still borrowing money, right? It's a fixed rate, 30 years. What's really awesome about this is that, let's say you get a mortgage or you have a mortgage, right? If you pay the minimum, for the 30, 30 years, and let's say you had extra money to try to pay off that mortgage uh, as soon as possible, uh, what you really could do is you could be averaging that into your portfolio because your portfolio is gonna typically grow seven to 10%, right, on average for those 30 years. Uh, so imagine that you subtract, let's say your mortgage was like 4%, you subtract seven minus four, you, you're keeping 3% that you're growing that money on top of for 30 years, compounding it. Imagine that guys. So, so a mortgage is a good debt, right? Because as well, that money that you are borrowing, it's depreciating in value because of inflation and uh, your the money that you have for the house is actually appreciating. So it's pretty awesome. It's a great concept there. But uh, one of the things is that you wanna do try to pay off debt. Uh, so right now I'm, I'm gonna have zero debt. And so I, that's one of the main things that I was focusing on. And now I have it paid off. The second point that I do have here guys is trying to build up your emergency fund. One of the things about an emergency fund is that you wanna try to have, well, I guess you wanna figure out how much you spend on average per month, right? So this is including your mortgage, uh, how much you spend for your phone, your gas, uh, food, 
right? So try to figure out your calculations on there and uh, how much you spend. So like, let's say you spend a thousand dollars. You want to try to have about six months worth of expenses. This is just in case of emer if something happens, right? Let's say you were to lose your job. Mark crashes, you lose your job. What you want to do is you want to have at least six months worth of expenses. So let's say your monthly expenses a month was a thousand dollars. You would want to have at least six thousand dollars in a savings account, right? Not probably not a savings account, but more of like a high yield savings savings account. They don't have the great high yield percentage, but it's better than having it in a regular savings account. Uh, but you definitely want to have about six months worth of it is what uh, my recommendation. Obviously, you could have more than that. Uh, it never hurts, uh, but definitely make sure you have that because that actually uh, what you want to do is if we let's say we do have a crash, the first thing that you don't want to do is have to um, sell your assets or sell your stocks in your portfolio because you lost your job and you're trying to pay off uh, the bills that are coming in. Right. Usually in a crash, uh, you want to try to take that opportunity and buy those great assets at discounts. And then that is actually one of the things that we did last year. Right. So it was like around March fifth we just started tanking right guys and so i ended up buying the dip the way down i kept buying and kept buying and then when we kept recovering i kept buying and buying so you want to put yourself in a great position which actually leads to my third point and that is trying to have a cash reserve aside from your emergency fund is have some amount that if we were to have a crash or even just a correction right you could start dollar cost averaging a larger amount into your portfolio and buy those great assets at a discount right so that is one of the things and that is actually why number one i paid off my debt right because i will have m1 borrow and i could theoretically borrow up to sixty five thousand. i'm not going to borrow that much right i'm only going to borrow enough to where i feel comfortable that i could pay off if worst goes to worst right so in my other one i think i borrowed up to fourteen thousand dollars I, I felt like I could pay that off uh, pretty quick, pretty soon. And so I'm not going to borrow more than what I don't feel comfortable with. Uh, so that is one of the things is try to have a cash reserve. That is what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to build some cash reserve because my M1 borrow stuff, I want to save that to like the very last moment if I do run out of my cash reserve, right? And again, I'll have my emergency fund in a different high yield savings account so that I don't touch that in case I really do need that. Uh, and you know if an emergency actually pops up uh, and that actually leads to our fourth fourth point and that is to continue the do dollar cost average into the portfolio no matter what the market is doing right so if we look at the value over time and sorry guys i'm using this uh, value over time so many times but just so you'll see um and, the, and if you look at it from far, far away, you'll see that this trend is upwards, right? But if you were to like zoom in into these, you could see that we're like having little spikes going up and then down, spike up, down, spike down. So that's very emotional, right? And so imagine if you kept buying at the tops, right? Uh, usually if you continue to average in, you're gonna get the best little line going upwards. And so that is what I'm, do I'm doing no matter what the market is doing, right? So as you'll see, I keep depositing $100. And actually, probably this would be the best one to show you is money invested here. So you'll see on the 5th of August, I deposited $100 to dollar cost average. On the 27th, I added $100 to the portfolio. On the 22nd, I, I guess, yeah, 27 and 22nd, I added $100 to continue to dollar cost average into the portfolio. And you, you can just see that over time, I'm continuing to dollar cost average no matter what the portfolio is doing. And we are seeing this continue to move upwards, guys. Every single time we kick off these scripts, we see this growing and growing and growing. And uh, you know, the market could continue to grow, go green or red. You know, this week we could have a green market or the market could be red. We're going to continue to see these dividends continue to pour in as you'll see that uh, the dividend payout if i look at this you'll see that even if the market was red tomorrow or you know next week apd is still going to pay me the dividend on the 9th of august 
Apple's still gonna pay me the dividend on the 12th of uh, August. And so you'll see Clorox, Costco, Reality Income, all these dividends, they're gonna continue to pour in no matter what the market is doing. The market could be red, the market could be green. Uh, as well, you'll see these dividend increases will continue to pop in. Uh, imagine, look at these awesome dividend raises, guys. We did absolutely nothing. This is actually one of the best reasons why I love dividend growth investing. We see these growths and growths and growths and we see that snowball grow and grow further and further and it's so awesome. As well, we get a really awesome tax benefit which is qualified dividends which we pay a 15% uh, rate on that. And so this is actually one thing that I do wanna show you guys which is one of the things I was reading. So missing just a few of the best uh, stock market days could cost you big. So uh, I was reading this and uh, JP Morgan ended up doing a report. So if you had invested $10,000 into the S&P 500 on January 3rd, 2000, right? And you left it there for about 19 years. So that is uh, until December 31st of 2019. Uh, you would have uh, 32,000. So if we look at this table that they created, which is pretty neat, uh, let's say uh, you didn't touch it, right? You dropped the $10,000 on January 3rd, 2000. Uh, by the end of uh, 2019, you would have $32,421, which is an annualized return of about 6%. And uh, let's say you had missed 10 of the best days, right? You would have cut your gains by half so you would have only had about sixteen thousand one hundred eighty dollars and if let's say you missed twenty percent uh well i guess not twenty percent but twenty of the best days you would have only gained about a hundred and seventy six dollars for the 19 years that is very bad right there and it just gets worse from there let's say you had missed 30 of the best days you would have actually been in the negative 40 negative 50 negative and as you guys can see on the 60 you would actually be down about eight thousand dollars because your ten thousand dollars would only be worth about two thousand three hundred thirty one dollars so that is pretty bad and that is for my reason is why i'm going to continue to dollar cost average as you guys see every single sunday i add every uh, 100 dollars and continue to buy and buy uh, and we see uh, these snowballs continue to grow and grow and grow guys and that is the best thing there uh, and the last point guys that I do want to um, emphasize here is patience you know continue to average in and just keep patience don't have any emotion just continue to drop your money into the portfolio and then 10 20 years 30 years from now your uh, future self will thank you and uh, you know you're gonna create wealth remember patience will create wealth and just continue to stick with it and we're gonna see that that grow and as you know i have seen that in the past two years that i started investing i was around uh 76 000. i really was around 36 000 or something you could look at my first video or something i think i was like at 35 35 000 or something and uh we have actually grown this pretty much uh, quite a bit uh, and you guys already saw the unrealized gains that we do have so uh, you know we're gonna continue to average in no matter what the market is doing uh, so the other thing that I do want to show you guys off before uh, we ended up this video is actually seeing how much we increase this uh, so first thing we are going to do is uh, we're gonna kick off the scripts for dividend payout so we're gonna see if any new companies uh, declare dividends so let's go ahead and uh, go here to portfolio tools get latest dividends uh, and I think I clicked on the wrong one uh, but we'll go here so one second we'll see if this thing gets done oh yeah it's running I actually clicked on the right one so it's running it wipes everything and figures out if there's any new declared dividends that are coming up and so it's still running it looks like it's done so uh, I don't think that we have anything new but uh, we are going to get all these dividends for the month of August so this is really exciting we're going to see how much we make after the, our portfolio was readjusted and so uh, the other thing now is if we go over here to settings uh, we're going to actually delete this 
and we're going to have to jump over to personal capital and grab the latest holdings from our portfolio and then we can kick off the script to see how much we made or how much we increased our projection projected dividends uh, and again we do have dividend uh well i guess we do have tutorials for these dividend scripts so check them out if you guys are interested so let's go ahead and jump over to personal capital all right guys so i'm here in personal capital in my m1 account you'll see this green button uh this copies the content of this table into your clipboard but I'm gonna go ahead and filter this out by alphabetical order. Click copy. Now the content of this table is in our clipboard. So we can jump over to the Google Sheets. We can right click, pay special, value only. And uh, we can, we can uh, actually go over here to holdings. And then uh, we can go over here to portfolio tools, update portfolio holdings. And uh, that will use that thing that we just copied and recalculate everything so let's go ahead and jump over to the dashboard and now everything is recalculating for us so this is awesome let's see how much we increased it this week um so it's exciting to see all right so we went up six dollars and 99 cents so this is pretty awesome we are finally making 226 dollars and 42 cents a month uh and for the week when we went up about what 13 cents for the day we went up two pennies so every day that goes by we are making two more pennies now the hour we are still only making 31 cents an hour and then for the hourly work wage this is pretty awesome so the hourly work wage was if we were to send our portfolio to work a 40 hour work week uh, they would get paid at, at a rate of a dollar and 31 cents so they gave us a raise of one penny i guess our portfolio was doing pretty awesome so yeah guys we're going to continue to dollar cost average and uh this is how i'm preparing for my uh next market crash it might happen it might not happen we will see what happens for uh you'll you'll know that i'm going to continue to dollar cost average if we do see the market crash you you will know that i will be buying heavy into the market and buying some great companies at a discount uh but anyways if you guys did stick all the way to their end be sure to drop your hashtag dca or dollar cost average and then i'll know you guys stuck all the way to the very end and again if you haven't subscribed already be sure to subscribe hit that bell notification and uh, i will catch you guys in the next video take care stay safe out there bye guys